Graham G. Some Matthews here with Fanside at DailyDDT.com. Head of MLW Azteca Lucha, Saturday, May 11th in Chicago. On the card, former MLW Women's World Featherweight Champion Delmi Exo teaming with Mayu Yamashita against Zeta and Janai Kai. Loaded tag team match. We're talking to Delmi here today. Delmi, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, coming up on this matchup in the last year, you've had quite the year in MLW, winning the Women's World Featherweight Championship. I messed that up a second ago, which I had to redo it, but the Featherweight Championship, uh, losing it, obviously, you're on the path to getting the belt back. With this matchup, do you kind of see this as your next step to getting back in a championship contention and getting that rematch that you have yet to get in MLW? Yeah, you know, it's really weird because I've more than done my fair share to earn a rematch Mm -hmm. for the featherweight championship, and they keep throwing me for a loop. Uh, This weekend coming up, we have a fatal four-way matchup. I'm super excited. Miyu Yamashita is someone who I have been wanting to get back in the ring with since the first time we, you know, locked claws. Mm -hmm. And Janai Kai, I have been training for those kicks, so I'm ready. I mean, just talk about everyone in this matchup. Like you said, Yamashita is going to be in the matchup. Kai is the current featherweight champion, obviously. What do you learn from your past battles of being in the in the ring with these women that kind of helps you prepare for these upcoming matches like this four-way matchup? Honestly, you kind of learn their determination mm-hmm. and like what drives them and motivates them to get a win in a ring. Uh, all three of these people who I will be wrestling are some of the most hardest working women who I have had the opportunity to share a locker room with. I honestly, I don't look down on any of them. Mm-hmm. I have to understand that I'm more hungrier for this title than them. I'm someone who is, you know, locked in with MLW. I feel like I'm someone who is more dedicated to the brand and more dedicated to the fans to bring them the best. And that's honestly what I'm going for. I want to represent the company. I mean, you got the experience behind you as a former champion as well going into this matchup. In your time so far in the featherweight division and the women's division in MLW, how have you seen the division kind of evolve from what it was when you first came in and a lot of the faces that were there then to what it is now and kind of being towards the top of the pecking order, I guess, as a former champion and just having that experience behind you? Um, It's really great to see how far we've come with the women's division. Mm -hmm. Uh, Before we were getting, you know, like maybe a women's match on the card and now we have like two or three different moments where like women are representing on the card um i don't want to give credit to selena but i will give credit to selena de la renta for helping really pick in and drive more focus towards the women's division um it's great to see the different faces that are coming up who are fresh blood in the business. We have Zeta Steel who's coming into year two of her career and she's already going to be, you know, in with a Japanese promotion. Don't want to like get mm-hmm. too in detail there, but like she has been able to start with MLW and I would say that MLW has definitely helped with her growth in her career. And with your own career too, I mean, coming in, obviously you have, had a lot of experience over the course of your career, but you come into MLW and you, like I said, last year winning the championship. What do you attest like your own progression and development to in the ring as a character as well as a constant in the MLW programming in the past year? It seems like you yourself have also grown tremendously in the ring as a character, like I said, to where we are now, to where you're kind of like one of the odds on favorites, so to speak, going into this four-way matchup at the at the event. Uh, what do you attest your own progress to as a performer in the time that you've been with the company? I think I've definitely broken out of my shell more, Mm -hmm. Uh, MLW. You know, before I might have been a little just happy to be there and kind of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, kind of just happy to get any opportunity that I was given. But now, with being the God Queen, there comes the burden of I have to be the best Mm -hmm. and wanting to prove that I'm the best every time I step in that ring. You know, I was one of the first women to actually commit and sign with a contract with them. And so at the end of the day, I don't want to be outshown Mm -hmm. and I've definitely elevated myself to prove that I can't be done easily. 
I mean, you mentioned it right there as the first female to sign a contract with MLW. That's got to be an amazing endorsement, right, for you to know that, like, they have enough faith in me to lock me down to a deal and that I'm kind of like the future of this division going forward. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, as I have mentioned, I want to represent the brand, and knowing how motivated and driven I am, I feel like I'm the right person to do it, and I don't want to lose my position as being one of the top females in the company. And you and know, on the wrong. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, like like I said, the progression that you've shown has been definitely evident to fans like me watching the show consistently. And you mentioned the turning point as well, kind of coming out of your shell. Uh, did winning the championship kind of mark that turning point or did it come prior to that point last year? So funny enough, I don't think winning the championship is what did that. I think winning the championship definitely, you know, elevated my uh, desire to work harder. Mm-hmm. But losing the championship is what made me really have this chip on my shoulder of, oh, okay, people think my time is over. Mm -hmm. People think my rise to the top has been done and that story's finished, but there's so much more that I want to do. And becoming a champion again is just the start of that. And not only did you become the champion, I mean, you beat Taya Valkyrie to become the champion, which is obviously a notable name in the wrestling world now with the Ring of Honor and AEW, of course. What did it mean to not only win the championship when you did, but to beat her for it, and then to go on to beat her again to retain the championship? And again, like an amazing endorsement of what you mean to MLW, but also just in the eyes of the fans, what it means for your stock kind of going forward. So just your thoughts on not only winning the championship, but the fact that you beat Taya Valkyrie to do it, someone that's accomplished pretty much all that there is to do in wrestling in the last number of years. Yeah, Taya is someone who I watched when I was training. She was up on Lucha Underground mm-hmm. when everyone was watching it. You know, everyone wanted to be in that position and, like, to be a part of MLW and have kind of that pass off of what that was and that legacy. It just feels so, it feels memorable. It feels like we are on to something that is going to be looked up from people who are, you know, maybe starting their careers or maybe getting interested in getting into wrestling. And so for her to be able to pass that on to me, it felt like such a privilege and an honor. Um, She's someone who I am incredibly grateful for having broken into wrestling and like really representing and being super supportive of like Mexican culture. And uh, as like a female Latina myself, like having her, do that pass off was just like so uh overwhelmingly like motivating to keep Mm. going keep pursuing more and more I love that you mentioned Lucha Underground, too, because I feel like, obviously, it's intentional, but you see, if you watch the product, like, a lot of Lucha Underground influence, and a lot of the same characters, obviously, in MLW today, uh, Dario Cueto obviously being one of them, but you mentioned being kind of almost inspired, in a way, from watching the original incarnation of Lucha Underground. How much of it do you see as a performer on the other end of it, uh, of the Lucha Underground influence in MLW of what we see today? Um, well, right now, it's I would say if we're scaling it, 50%, mm-hmm. you know, like Dario Cuero, uh, we have Cesar Duran right now, who yeah. I'm actually partnered with and being managed under. Um, we have Selena Del Rento, who passed her there. We have a lot of, we have a show called the Azteca <laughs> Battleground coming in. Mm-hmm. So I love that MLW isn't afraid to feature lucha as a high profile uh division because mm-hmm. a lot of times lucha can get lost in the mix lost in the shuffle it can get put in as like a nice palate cleanser for the heavyweights or like you know as we've seen on other cards but like at mlw lucha is so respected and i love that yeah, I think MLW does a great job of that just in general with all of their shows. But I mean, obviously, this one in particular, like you said, this one's called the Azteca Lucha. This is the name of the event coming up in Chicago. So, like, this one in particular is going to have a lot of that. Uh, but do you think, kind of going off of what you just said, and you mentioned it right there, do you feel like that's one of the strong suits of MLW right now, fe- featuring more of the Lucha stuff than more promotions do on a mainstream scale, um, but also in the women's division as well? I feel like there's a lot of different things MLW is doing right now that more people should be paying attention to because it does stand out from a lot of what are the other companies are doing currently. 
yeah, um, MLW, the way they feature Lucha and making it such a more of a priority on the show is definitely that. I feel like with the women, we are, like, encouraged to do more of, like, a high-impact offense versus mm-hmm. just, you know, going it down and things like that um, without going into much detail. But we are encouraged to, like, bring it and, like... Mm-hmm most with our uh time that we have in front of the audience and like it just does help you know when you're creating these stories and you want to get people invested in your character no it works out well too in addition to that you guys also get like a decent amount of promo time and in front of the crowd and backstage segments too so it's like a nice mixture of kind of getting to know you guys from that standpoint as well but also getting to see what you guys are capable of in the ring which is like the perfect combination but uh, we're going to be seeing that on this show as Tekka Lucha the four of you guys yourself Delmi obviously Mio Yamashita uh, Janai Kai Zeta for the championship right the championship is going to be up for grabs here Yes, it will be, and I will be gunning for it. (laughs) And hopefully you come out on top, but, I mean, it remains to be seen, like you said, in in the time that you lost the championship. You've gotten other opportunities, but it has yet to be one-on-one. When are we getting that one-on-one match? And, again, you may not need it if you win here, but hopefully at some point we still get to see you and Janai Kai go one-on-one again. I am willing to wrestle Janai Kai as long as I am physically capable of it. (laughs) Hopefully it's at MLW if I do not... For some reason, someone tries to, you know, underhand me. It is a fatal four-way. Anything can happen. I actually don't have to be pinned. Janai doesn't have to be pinned in order for this title to be changed. Mm. Uh, If any funnery happens, (laughs) I demand a title opportunity. Whether it be Janai holding it, or whether it be Miu, or whether it be Zeta Steel. I Mm. would like a one-on-one matchup. Or the title. Um, and if it's denied, you know, that's just a bonus. That's just a plus for mm-hmm. the fans. <laughs> yeah, as a former champion, I think you're owed that much, and hopefully we do get to see that at some point down the road. But before then, obviously, we got this show. Azteca Lucha from MLW Saturday, May 11th in Chicago. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Delmi, thanks so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Congrats on the success. I know you took time out of your busy schedule today to chat, so thanks for that, and best of luck at your show tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs>